Hi everyone, my name is Professor Wilson Kamami and my YouTube channel is also called Professor Wilson Kamami. So, welcome to our channel where we simplify mathematics together. Today is our first class on set theory. This is our first video on set theory where we are going to look at the introduction set. So, today we are going to look at the first class on the introduction to set theory. What is set? Set is the collection of objects, and this object must be distinct. Let's take an example. You can have a class, maybe we can talk of in, a, in a, this university, we have a set of those students who are taking uh, mathematics, engineering mathematics. That is a set of objects, distinct objects. When I talk of distinct objects, uh, it should be clear that it is something clear, and it is not repeated. You can say unique in one way or the other. So, what is set? Let me take an example of set of numbers between 1 and 10. So, you can have a set X of numbers 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and 10. A set of numbers between 1 and 10. So, in this case, this is our set. I want us to understand how we name set. How do we name set? Naming of set. Because majority of students, they have a, a problem when it comes to naming set. So one thing I want to highlight is that your set should be in capital. You should use capital letters when you are naming your set. Again, we use this one, we call them curly bracket. We use curly bracket to disclose what are those elements or objects inside the set. And again, we separate them using commas. The elements, we separate them using commas. So that you can say set X uh, has this element, 1, 2, 3, all the way to 10. Again, that's how we name set. And another thing, uh, if you want to say 3 is a member of a, this set, you can say X, uh, you want to mean that 3 is a member of X. It means that V is a member of X. Zero is not a member of X. That's how we name said. And again, the L, this one we call them objects. This one we call them objects. Or we call them, you may find other people referring to it as elements. So whenever we say elements of X, we have one all the way. So V is a member of this set, zero is not a member of this set. Again, if I have two sets, let me say I have set X and I have set B, you realize that this one is a set, but this one is not a set. Why are you saying it's not a set? Because we said it has distinct elements. So in this case, you find that one is being repeated. So in that one, make this one not being a, a set. Thank you. Now we look at our, we are going to look at different types of sets. And before we look at different types of sets, I want to emphasize on something. When you are naming set, it can be a set of any object. You can form a group and say this is a set of uh, group A with these members, these are the members, these are the members. You can have a, a, a set of, maybe you can form a party of three members. You can call yourself group B. It's a set B of who? Tom, Mary, and John. This is a set B comprises of the following element. Why you say Tom is a member of this group. But you find that uh, Mike is not a member of this set. So set is a collection of distinct objects. Now let's look at the uh, different, uh, we are still looking at the introduction. Eh? And then now let's look at focus now on the equality of a set. We say, assume we have set X or set A, which have A, B, and C. We have said how we name our set. We use curly brackets. 
we separate elements using comma and again elements we have elements and again this is our set a we use capital letter so in this case now we may have two sets what we call now equality of a set so assume we have two set red a and b b sets b set we have two set a and b we say set a and set b are said to be equal if all elements of a are in b and all elements of b are in a in simple terms they are sharing the same elements and another thing i should uh, emphasize on uh, when it comes to uh, set the order doesn't matter this is the same you can also name b set as b a c the order doesn't matter so in this case you may have set a which have one three seven and you have set b one seven three you realize set a is equals to set b why because all elements in a are in b and all elements of b are in a so that's how we name the sets are equal another thing we need to look at is cardinality when you look at the cardinality of sets we are looking at the number of elements like now we have set a we have seen it has one three seven so what is the cardinality of a what is the cardinality of a you realize is three it has three elements so it has three elements and still under the introduction of sets let's look at subset when we are mentioning about subset of set it's very simple like now a is a set of one three seven from this one we can have very subgroups we can call it small sets out of this one that's the one we call them subset like i can have b with the following element one element a this one is a subset of this one so you can be able let me say also you have a set c maybe it has one and seven so you can see b is a subset of a this one means subset so b is part of a as you can see all elements of b are in a it's not a must that all elements to be here for the equality but b is a subset it's part of a again c it's part of a so c is a subset of a so whenever you are talking of a subset we say if you have two set a and b b is said to be a subset of a if all elements in b are in a but the vice versa must not be true so b is a subset of a so now let's look at types of sets so now we are going to look at types of sets i'll start by simple none or what we call empty set this is a set that contain no element but i want to emphasize something even though it does not contain any element we still call it a set so in that case if i have set a it may be an empty it has no element we use empty with the curly bracket or you can see a is an empty set so you can use this table you can use this table or you can use empty curly bracket to mean that this is a set with no element and i want to emphasize that this is also a subset of another set and again it is a set by itself so another one is the one suggest is a set with only one element i can see a set b is a singleton since it has one one element it has only one element it can be b is equals to a it is a set with only one element let's look at the other type of a set is finite set as the one suggests it's a set which has countable elements it has countable elements they are countable 
you can count them so like set a has a b f g h z that is our set a but at the same time we may have infinite set uncountable eg you can talk of a set of all odd numbers So in this case, you don't know how many odd numbers are there. So it is uncounted. So it is infinite set. So we have looked at empty set when it has one element. When you have countable and uncountable number of set. So those are the three types of set. I want to continue. We look at uh, other types of sets. Set number four. Now we are going to look at the fourth type of set. We call it disjoint sets. Let's assume you have two sets, set A and B. You have two sets A and B. Set A has one, four, nine, and B has one, has a two, six, eight. So we say two sets are said to be distinct if they have no common element. As you can see here, we have three elements: one, four, and nine. Here we have two, six, and eight. You realize that they don't have any common elements between the two. So in that case, we say two sets are said to be disjoint. We shall come and look at how we represent that one in a in a Venn diagram. You find this one is A and this is B. You find that these two sets have nothing in common. So again, I want to look at um because I want to introduce another element of how we represent our set uh, is universal set. This is a set of all objects under consideration. Universal set. Universal set is a set of all objects which are under consideration. So again, if we are to uh, to use uh, uh, this Venn diagram, even though you can't look at Venn diagram into details, again you may have universal set of all numbers between from one to nine. You have that one, and then we have set A, which is a subset of this one. This is the set under consideration. You may say A is a set of one, five, nine, seven. I said order doesn't matter, and maybe six. And you find that you have set B as one, as um, two, four, six, and eight. You look at this one. If you are to represent this one, now this is the set under consideration, universal. This is the universal. And we always use this letter go. When we are talking of ordinary set, these circles represent ordinary set. We, are, we mean we have ordinary set. So in case now, in this case, I have the whole set under consideration. So we say that A, this is my set A, has the following element. And this is set B has the following element. Maybe you can look at that one. But you find that if this is the point of intersection where they are sharing the element. Like in this case, we have one element which we are sharing here, six. So the rest is one, five, nine, seven. They are at the A, and here we have two, four, and eight. So you find that there is a point where they are sharing six. And again, because our universal set was one, two, three, look at those numbers that are not in A and are not in B. Which are those? We have any number which is not in both cases. Uh, which one? We have three. I think it's only three, if I'm not wrong. So you have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So it is only three which is not at the which is not in set A and is not in set B. So this is the general types of set. This is the universal set. I wanted to explain into details what is the universal set. It's a set under consideration. You may be considering in your university, those students taking sciences, but other sciences, there are those who are taking engineering, there are those who are taking maybe the other BSc. So now the universal set is that 
the 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 set other consideration which is the student taking sciences um, who are studying sciences so uh, that marks the end of our first uh, video on the introduction to sets i want now we go to the next we shall uh, go to the next video where we shall look at how do we get the union intersection of sets and um, what we call sets operations union intersection and the difference the metric set complement of a set so that uh, uh, we can learn more on set i would say thank you for watching video and uh, continue subscribing so that we can simplify mathematics together thank you